My name is Dimali Kodikara, and I am the series producer of a podcast called Mothers of Invention. Um, I was kindly roped into co-hosting as well this year, so I'm doing that also. Um, but we're a, fe- we're a podcast on feminist solutions to the climate crisis. So, you know, again, cash, saving the planet, as we do. Uh, but, you know, we focus on women and girls, non-binary folks, because um, we find ourselves on the front lines of the climate crisis. Us before everybody else is um, is definitely the, the predicament at hand. And that applies to anyone who is, that really applies to anyone who is, um, you know, uh, in a marginalized, is marginalized, considered marginalized in society. So, um, you know, we're working to pu- create a platform for those folks to share the solutions that they're working on because who better to know how to fix these things than the people who are literally standing on the lines of 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 these troubles and there is definitely something for everybody there so that's that's what i'm doing that was nice uh well hi everyone my name is christy drutman and I'm the host of my show called Brown Girl Green, which is also a podcast and a media series that is centered around diversity and inclusion in the environmental movement, as well as creative solutions to the climate crisis. And it mainly focuses around my journey as a Filipina American uh, environmentalist and environmental advocate. And I talk a lot about my journey of just not seeing other people of color Um, Black, Indigenous, or people of color in the environmental movement, environmental leadership, and I really wanted to find a way uh, to how we actually address that, because if we don't see more Black, Indigenous, and people of color in environmental leadership, uh, whether it be an organization or a company or even an activist movement, it's really hard to create collective culture shift around making people want to move towards finding climate solutions. And so I really wanted to create a platform where Black, Indigenous, and people of color could feel comfortable to express themselves and also to just learn about what's happening to our planet and how it specifically is disproportionately impacting Black, Indigenous, and people of color first and foremost. And so I wanted to create a space for BIPOC um to feel empowered and to actually start exploring what those solutions look like in their own communities and their own journeys by following my story as well yeah that's fantastic i love it and what is phenomenal about the youth climate movement is that um self-care is something that is being built into uh all strategies from here onward um which I think is, you know, it's very, I think it, it would be considered somewhat um, used in various, in various other movements um, amongst organizers, but it's so integral into the youth climate movement. Um, is that what you're seeing too? You know, and it's amazing. It's amazing. But if you don't have the tools or the structures in place or the support systems to actually know how to cope with all those difficult feelings, like so you're true. Gonna- you're going to get swayed by whomever, whatever you read on the internet. And that can lead people down some really dangerous paths because like, yeah, you know, young people, like our brains are still forming and like, we're still like, you know, figuring things out. And it's like, it's amazing how many risks that a lot of us take, but it's also like self-care needs to be embedded more into, into that work because yeah, young people are, very vulnerable to like i don't know to to doing to being harmed and harming each other in ways that like you know need to be addressed whether it be like cancel culture Mm. or like just burning yourself out and then like justifying it because the world's on fire you know it's like there's like a whole spectrum of of the ways in which like having access to such knowledge and awareness about where the world is at is beautiful, but it can also be really like a lot. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, yeah, for sure. I mean, talking to other youth climate activists, something that 
seems to come up is that um that there's a lot of support actually so even and then there's this sort of that understanding that the community is built that way around a system of support so if you really are like nope i'm full capacity right now and i've got all this work to do there's someone there to help pick up the slack and just keep it going um and i think just like as an organizing principle that's really uh, incredible like it's super insightful and very mature actually a way of dealing with it yeah i would say like i'm really grateful for a lot of my followers on my blog and my instagram because there is a week it was a couple weeks ago i was going through a really intense uh time of personal turmoil um and i made like a story just saying like you know, everyone, like, I literally, my mental health is in a really bad place right now. Like, I'm just being transparent. I don't even really want to post this week. Um, if anyone can send me a nice meme or something cute, like, <laughs> something nice, I'd really appreciate it. And I, my inbox was, like, flooded with people I've never talked to before, oh. sending me, like, puppy pictures and, like, telling me how like they were really inspired that I have such a big platform but like I'm being like really honest about how hard these things can be and that that made them feel like they could be honest about hard how hard things are for them right now during this time because for a lot of people this has been a rough summer this has been a rough year yeah like rough decade already but I mean it's just like I I think in general like being more honest about it but what I'm trying to do is not bleed on people. That's like what I'm trying to figure out is like taking mental health breaks and admitting that I'm struggling through things, but also like drawing the line between that mm. and also like how do I actually take accountability for myself to take care of myself and actually understand my role in allowing other people to just to kind of disturb my boundaries right. or to take too much from me. Because at the end of the day, it's a hard reframe. We have a role to play in not taking care of ourselves. As much as we'd like to blame other people, as much as we'd like to blame the world, there is a lot of aspects that place, especially like black women, women of color, like under a lot of like different layers that like may say you don't deserve self-care because you have to fight. But at the end Ooh. of the day, you have to rest. You have to take accountability for taking care of yourself. And I had to like wake up to that harsh reality multiple times this past year where it was like, you can't just go 500 miles per hour all the time because at the end of the day, you don't have the same safety net as other people. That's like another reframe. It's like, you don't like, as much as it's easy to say, oh, like a woman of color has to work five times harder than other people. Women of color should be spending five times as much time trying to like carve out time to rest. And it's like, it's just a reframe on your time. Even yeah. if it's like 10 minutes of like, okay, I have to make breakfast and I have to sit down. It's like, instead of looking at your phone, scrolling through the news about how crap the world is, just sit and enjoy your meal simple yeah. things like it doesn't have to be this like oh weekend getaway or like 10 hours in a bathtub with rose petals like <laughs> it can just be like no i'm gonna acknowledge my body and breathing and living and like actually saying no one gets to touch this this is mine so how do you get to that point then because i think it's also really hard to know when that moment is <laughs> happening to you you know no, like sure, how yeah. do you how do you act not like when is the moment or what's the indicator that something yeah. is wrong and how do you find your way out of it i mean it's happening to me right now or like recently like the past two weeks i've felt i've felt that i felt it in my body of just like this like because i basically took a break i was like i'm gonna take an actual vacation from the work that i'm doing yeah. and i took a break but it was like even during the break, like, I even had a vacation responder on, which, like, I've never done before. I felt so, like, adult. I was like, vacation <laughs> responder. Uh, to be like, I'm not going to be in the office. But people were still messaging me and emailing me. And I shut my notifications off, but, like, there's still this urge of, like, oh, like, if I don't get back to them, then, like, 
you know, how is this going to work out because I need to move these things forward. And there's still that, that dialogue in my head. You still have to work five times harder. Like there's still that there. And it's very hard to like shut that off when you're, you're still for me at the beginning of my career and trying to build things for myself. Like it's just hard. And I think what I, what I recognize is I felt it in my body of like, I feel like people are taking things away or like, I feel like I'm giving my power away to other people because I'm at the ratio of time I'm giving to, you know, other organizations or companies or collaborators is disproportionate to how much time I'm actually giving to myself. So I did like a time audit of my days. That's great. And I was like, Maybe this is why I'm feeling so bad because I haven't done that. Wow. And, then, and then actually when I returned from my vacation a few days ago, like this past week, I actually like bought groceries, which is such a big privilege, bought my own food to like be like, you're going to make actual recipes and you're going to mm-hmm. cook for yourself and you're going to like do Pilates again because I love Pilates and you're going to actually like make time for that. And yeah. And I just had to push myself. I had to get past the dialogue and that's just, it's a constant practice. I don't think you ever reach it. It's like, you have to be disciplined. Yeah. Cause you're also your own boss and all your colleagues. And then you're like the person who has like regular life stuff that happens like after you finish your, send your last email out and then you're somebody's daughter and you maybe you're somebody's partner and you're like, Oh, I have, other responsibilities other than these work things like when does it end because you know you oh, saying you know you feel very adult putting on a vacation responder but I'm like it's actually pretty adult to like keep working through the vacation is like the real misery of it you know oh, and no, I feel like it's actually now very progressive and and righteous and radical to be like actually no like I've got to stop like this is I'm turning this on and you're not going to be able to get hold of me between these hours or these days of the week or for this length of time, because I'm going to be, yeah, really going balls out with my self care right now, you know? So, I mean, but then like, it's aside from work, we also have this whole issue of climate fatigue, like learning such horrific things constantly having to process them ourselves to make it more digestible for other people to be able to um to for other people to be able to sort of uh hold hold within themselves and do something with and that's um an enormous amount of responsibility i realize now yeah i mean sometimes it just feels really hopeless it can really feel hopeless like And I think I sit with the hopelessness of like, yeah, what if none of this, what if none of this is going to like move the needle, you know, and you have to sit with that reality. I like, I feel like not, I'm like the opposite. Like, I feel like you have to embrace like the shame and like the pain and the reality of a situation to actually feel more at ease about it because you recognize what is in your control and what is not in your control. And I think Mm. that's like where your power is and that's how you maintain sanity. It's like the only way, because if you just go into this whole thing of like, I'm just gonna keep working and fighting and this is good, this is 100% gonna work. You're gonna, that'll last you six months, maybe a year. It lasted me maybe a year when I was in college and I was like 18. Then I was 19 and I was like, oh, this is going to be like my whole lifetime. It's going to be beyond my lifetime, like for all this stuff and accepting that reality of like, well, then why am I doing this? Or like, why does this matter? And the only way I've been able to cope with it is like accepting the reality of what I can actually do tangibly, given the tools and the resources I have and to make sure that I know that I'm not alone. And that there's other people that are doing this work and to not have all the weight on my shoulders, but to figure out how to collaborate with people and build with other people. I think once I started building more things with other people, other organizations around the world, other activists, 
I mean, that just totally opened up a space for me to be like, okay, like, we're all in it, understanding it, and I have more people I can talk to and process with. And I think having other people to just process with has made such a huge difference. Um, that's how I deal with it. And then beyond that, it's like, like I said, just developing a discipline to actually like commit to self-care um, as a practice every day, um, not just like waiting for that like vacation six months down the line because from my experience your brain is has already been trained so long if you didn't do self-care that like your brain even on vacation is going to be like you need to think about these things like mm -hmm. I know some people have to oh, yeah. cut that off I'm not I'm not there yet yeah. I'm definitely one of those people that's an overthinker and so for you the overthinkers out there and the, the givers out there you just need to do it every single day of your life or else it's yeah. just not gonna, it's not gonna happen. That's oh, that's some outstanding wisdom. Outstanding. It's so true to do it in a paced way um, with some kind of daily practice, I think is enormous. And I, I relate to the, um, you know, cooking and it's cause I'm, I'm like a terrible cook. I, actually, I'm not a terrible cook, but I'm just terrible at like cooking for myself. Like I just, get lazy about it and you know it's whatever's there but actually um i find that the act the act of uh you know chopping or sauteing or baking is it, it does feel like self-care how have you navigated uh while doing work in the environment environmental movement like um like not feeling guilty for setting boundaries around like your time and your energy. How have you actively practiced that um, when other people, you know, expect a lot out of you or have expectations because you've reached this certain position of like the work that you're doing? How do you actually actively practice that in your work? Yeah, it's a really good question. And with full transparency, I've definitely not figured that out. Definitely not. But what I will say, yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. And also it's changing constantly, I find. Like the markers keep changing. And a lot of those markers are for the better because it's lots more people are getting involved. Lots more people are finding awareness around these issues. And that is definitely um, easing the pressure for sure. Um, but the other thing I would say is um, working in with a community that um, understands and respects the issues at hand. Um, the team that work on Mothers of Invention is almost exclusively, uh, is largely women of color. Um, there are, there's only one, one man that works on the show on a regular basis. Um, so working with women is, fantastic because we can we actually can discuss issues of like you know mental health and uh you know exhaustion all those things and we're all working extremely hard everybody who works on the show works extremely hard um so certainly in terms of mental health but also in terms of um you know in working on the show itself working on a show that's rooted in feminist principles, we can afford to talk about things like love and hope and care and compassion, you know, and those filters aren't often used when people talk about climate or the environment, you know, it's, it's the, the urgency is there and I, it, it should be there, but it is, um, to be able to acknowledge the vulnerability, the sensitivity is so imperative. And I think um, being able to do that with um, largely women, largely women of color really, really helps. It really has helped me so much. Like we, when, think, when I'm like not feeling right, it just happened recently, like I have not been feeling very well, sent an email, to the team and they're like we have got you we've got you like don't push yourself like you need this and this and this and this picked up no problem it's done it's done don't think about it concentrate on yourself you know 
and not it's, that is such an enormous privilege enormous because most people don't get to have that in their work environment i'm really lucky but um how are there any sort of situations that you feel like you've experienced difficulty expressing your, your need for self-care Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's especially in spaces where, like, people are, have such good intentions, like, want to do a project with me or love my work or love, like, what I'm doing and are just like, oh, I think this idea would be so cool. And the thing is, is like, a lot of people have really cool ideas. And, like, I, I mean, I feel really privileged that so many people have reached out to me with really cool ideas. And, the thing is, I can't do them all. I just can't anymore. Like, I don't have the capacity. I think maybe a year or two ago, I'm like, wish you hit me up back in like 2018 when I had, you know, not all of this craziness. Um, but now it's like, yeah, like it, it's very hard to say no, especially the things that like, you know, sound really interesting or sound really cool, but I just know I'm not gonna have the capacity to, to give my all to it or it just doesn't align with like what I need. Like if if a thing is like unpaid um, and is also going to take up a ton of time and they're asking a lot of labor out of me, I just can't say yes to those things anymore. Mm. Um, which is hard because there's been some opportunities where it's like, oh, I could get really great exposure, but it doesn't align with like what I need to make my work sustainable in the long term. Mm. Um, and that's like what I'm invested in. And it's been a thing where like I've also had to figure out okay if I am going to do like unpaid work it has to be for an organization or a cause or a situation where like I feel we're co-creating together mm -hmm. like the labor is not just like on me to like shout out your work it's like oh yeah. we're actually like, creating a piece together yeah and I feel like those things have been really important acts of self-care because it's like I'm trying to find things that actually feel in alignment to me rather than being like I need to just do as much stuff as possible um, without being focused because like I don't value my own labor. I don't value my time. And I did that for a long time. I was like, oh, like my work doesn't mean anything until like people notice it. So I have to just do a million things. And I think mm -hmm. I'm starting to get closer in a place where like, you know, I can't be super picky, but I definitely like have been like, oh, like would love to work with you in the future. This just doesn't line up for me right now. And that's been really powerful because it's like, I'm recognizing my worth through my actions. So what would you say your go-tos are? I mean, you mentioned like cooking and Pilates yeah. and stuff. Are those yeah. your like specific go-tos? No, I think that's just a part of things I really like. I think mine is going on my quarantine walks. I go on a quarantine walk as often as possible. So I'll spend like probably 30 minutes to an hour. I know not everyone can do that, but, but I live in like a pretty neighborhood and I like just like not bringing my phone with me. Like I don't even like listening mm. to be honest. Like I just want to be away from technology. So I'll just like leave my phone at home go wander somewhere for like, and for whatever reason, I kind of know what 30 minutes to an hour feels like. <laughs> I can kind of tell. I mean, I don't know. I kind of figure it out. You like, finally synchronized with the sun and it only you know, took a few walks. <laughs> yeah. So I would say like going on a walk has been really important. And also just like, um, there, I do like morning journaling. Um, mm. Those have been like a lot of my go-tos during quarantine, for sure. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I think um, for me, I, yeah, I, I still don't have any daily self-care practices, I, I would say. Like maybe it's just like at the moment it's limited to like my morning cup of tea because I'm British and Sri Lankan. So you literally poke a hole in me and I bleed tea, you know. So there is like a... There's <laughs> like a, a real comfort thing to that. Um, and it sounds so small, but it really does feel so significant in that I don't feel like I've started anything until I've like had that, that moment with myself. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not bad at like uh, broader self care strategies, I would say, you know, like, as I said, you know, I've, I've dealt with depression on and off like most of my life. And, um, 
I know, I know when it's coming. And so over the years, you know, you realize, oh, I've survived it once. Oh no, twice, three times actually. Oh, right. Now I've got a toolkit and I know what's in my toolkit and what I need to bring out when. And I think once you've recovered multiple times over, um, you get, you just, you, it's not necessarily getting better or worse at it, but you, you just get faster at knowing how to, what to do and how to do it. Um, but when it gets really bad, I would say, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm an artist first and foremost. So um, drawing and painting, even though I, I've gone through decades, not even picking up a pen or a paintbrush or anything, but it is um, really implicit in who I, who I am as a person. I think there needs to be more discussions about like what self-care looks like in organizing. Um, because obviously, like, some people have the privilege to hand off work, but there's, I've heard so many situations where that's, like, not yeah. the case. Um, so it's, like, what do you do if, like, you want to help and you want to do activism and you want to, like, work, 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 um, and the work, I don't know, can't be handed off to someone else? How do you, like, deal with, like, the guilt of that? And I think... I just want to start off by saying that I think ultimately it just goes back to knowing what your role is and your gifts are that you bring to the world because I think a lot of times people don't acknowledge the gifts that they have. Um, a lot of people are just like, oh, like, I'll bring these talents, I'll bring these skills, and then I just grind, but then it's like, at the end of the day, like, do you actually acknowledge or affirm yourself for any of that um and especially when like times are tough and then you're like oh I can't hand off this work to someone else you also need to affirm yourself okay like I'm not going to feel guilty that I can't do this right mm -hmm. now I'm just going to be responsible communicate it to people and say okay can someone hand this off no one takes it then the move the work's just not going to move forward right guess what the world's not going to implode if that happens so I'm just wondering if you have a tip about that. It's a good one. It's a good one. I think um, I would agree with that, actually. I would agree with that. I think at some point you just have to say, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't, you know. And it's like, we'll give ourselves that space for physical discomfort or pain. You know, we'll do it for, for the flu, we'll do it for, you know, all kinds of it, or for a doctor's appointment, we'll do it. But you know, emotional, mental, mm -hmm. spiritual exhaustion is a real thing. And again, I think this is why um, I'm very, very lucky to be working around uh, largely women, because that is um, something that is recognized you know, and I think there is um, space afforded to that. But I totally agree with you. That is an enormous privilege. Like I've worked in many, many environments where that is absolutely not the case. Um, and I think, yeah, we being able to uh, describe mental health in the same way that we would describe our physical health is is definitely a way to do that in the interim. I'm just wondering what is like, I don't know, one of like the funniest like memes or pictures or things that you watched recently that you'd recommend to other people listening today? Uh, a friend po posted something like, um, if you put all, all of your, if you map all of your ex-lovers together in a line, you can actually see the arc of your mental health. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I said that to a girlfriend and she just grabbed her pen and just started like, you know, drawing diagrams and like, you know, Venn diagrams and things. Just being like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> what about you? Um, let me think. I have just, let me think, something that just made me really laugh recently. Huh. I just love watching panda videos, like pandas that fall on top of each other. Or like, 
are just sleeping. I don't know. I just walk by any time of the day and I'm like, this is it. This is great. It's yeah. so true. And when I feel um, particularly glum also, I look at my, you know, videos and photos of my niece and nephews as well. Cause it is, it's like the, um, the it's an innocence thing, isn't it? It's totally. like, yeah. Just remembering that that is actually a thing. Like when things get really dark, you're like, wait, no, this actually st exists, you know? Um, and also when I feel glum, I go actually so, nerdy but i will go on to the twitter our twitter page when i'm like why am i doing this i hate my life and i'm like no i don't hate my life I'm gonna go on the twitter page and i have a look at all the nice things that people have said about the show and then i'm like oh, okay right, okay <laughs> i'm doing the right thing i'm on the right path it's okay everybody's everybody's enjoying it getting something out of it it's worth it you know totally amazing thank you so much Thank you so much. This is so fun.